It is now 5.30, and we will begin our final meeting, sixth and final meeting, of the Special Task Force on Racial Discrimination here at San Jose State University. Uh, I'm Judge Cordell, the chairperson of the task force. We'll start off with introductions, starting with my far left, Coach Wright, and if you'll state who you are and what your affiliation is, and please make sure each of you speak into the microphone because we have people who are listening from off-site. Wayne Wright, Athletics Administrator. Linda Hyden. Sorry. Linda Hyden, Chair of the Academic Senate and Professor in Psychology. Chris Cox, Lecturer Faculty, Department of Sociology and Interdisciplinary Social Science. Maria Luisa Lanis, Faculty, Sociology and Interdisciplinary Social Science. Uh, my name is Michael Randall. I'm an academic advisor with Academic Advising and Retention Services. Willie Hagen, President of Cal State Dominguez Hills. Gabriel Gonzalez, student, majoring in Justice Studies. Bernadette Shane, former faculty trustee and retired faculty from Humboldt State University. Diana Zen, a fifth year nursing student. Tony Ross, Vice President, Student Affairs, California State University, Los Angeles. Peter Lee, third year student and Vice President of Associated Students. Rick Callender, Vice President of the State of California and Hawaii State Conference of the NAACP. Gabriel Rodriguez, um, SJSU Student Director of Intercultural Affairs for Associated Students. I'm Marcos Pizarro, I'm the Chair of Mexican American Studies. Gary Daniels, Associated Students President-Elect. <coughs> Ellen Lynn, Director of Counseling Services. Thank you, first uh, congratulations to Gary. He won <laughs> his election as President. And congratulations. Um, I, um, Thank each of, one of you for uh, your participation and the time you've given to this task force. This is our final meeting. We will have put in, what, 12 hours? Uh, working on the recommendations. By 7 p.m., when uh, the president of the university arrives, we will have finalized the recommendations. I'm just telling you all that. We will have them finalized. So we're going to begin now. Um, I, I, I have a nickname for this task force, and it uh, came to me this week. It's called the never-ending task force because I kept getting you know, these emails even up to today um, from within and without the task force about recommendations. And, and I will tell you quite frankly, it was very frustrating to me because I set a timeline and asked people to, to uh, comply with the timeline so I could get edits in and then give them back to you and fit them in so we could discuss them. And I did that, and you received the document you have on top, which has red in it. These were all edits from task force members who got them to me in a timely fashion. Uh, then I ended up getting more edits, uh, uh, one uh, set of recommendations, I should say, from uh, Professor Sievertson, and um, we are not going to discuss her recommendations because they are not generated by the task force. It doesn't mean they're not important. They came in last minute, and they are a matter of public record now. So they are part of the, uh, the record of the task force, as are every email that we've received and, and other recommendations. So it's not because they're not important, it's just that they're not timely. We don't have time to incorporate all those in. Additionally, the edits that came in or revisions that came in after the deadline that I set, I have them. They are not incorporated into the document you have on top because I didn't have time to do that because they came in late. If we have time before 7 o'clock, we will talk about those. But if we do not, that's the way it's going to be. So I want to go as quickly as possible so we can get time to look at those additional revisions. Um, and so let us consider first the edits and revisions, suggestions that came in in a timely fashion. And they are the document that's on the top <coughs> with the recommended edits in red. That doesn't mean they should be in. I just put them in where it was recommended they should be. So let's talk about those first, get those taken care of, and then we can go on <coughs> to other things. Um, so uh, the edits that came in first dealt with campus climate, and it is a recommendation from Professor Pizarro and number 15 to add the language that you see in red. So it'll read in total, require the Center for Faculty Development 
to provide faculty training about the rules for civil discourse and respect in the classroom and about understanding the strengths diverse students bring into the classroom, develop effective strategies for engaging diverse students. Anybody have any problem with that? Any questions, observations? All right, are we okay adding that language? Yeah. All right, it's in. Uh, number 16, and this includes his edit. Present, this is Pro Professor Pizarro again. Present events each semester that highlight the experiences and important contributions of diverse communities, such as the showing of undocumented with opportunity for discussion. And then the rest of the recommendation is as we had approved. Any problems with that addition? You need to use the mic. Right. Present is just a little bit confusing. I'm wondering if schedule would be more specific. It's, it's a In other words, if, if you're not presenting, uh, Professor Pizarro, you want to speak to that? Because I, I understand what you're saying. You, you meant you're not saying that you want them actually to present it, meaning do it. You're saying schedule them. Schedule events. Well, yeah, or, that, or that, vote. that language wasn't part of my recommendation. I just made the. Oh, red that's right. Because we had present events already. That so was no. part of Linda's original recommendation. All right. So do you want to change your wording from present to schedule? Yes. Does anybody have a problem with that? So it'll say schedule events each semester that highlight, and then we'll keep in. And then are we okay with Professor Pizarro's uh, edit, adding the, the language in red? Okay, hearing nothing, that means a yes, and we'll change the word present to schedule. And then there is a new one, number 18, and this was uh, sent in by Michael Randall, and it is convene ethnic-specific leadership retreats during the fall semester to facilitate the transition of frosh and transfers into the SJSU environment. Okay. Go right ahead. So ethnic specific, do you mean people or topic? Uh, both, actually. The, the uh, spirit of this particular recommendation had to do with the fact that each group experiences San Jose State in a different context. And we wanted to create an environment where students kind of knew what to look for so that they could deal with the, the culture shock that's a specific to each group, as well as the type of incidents that occur. And the other question is, do you, who would be the one targeting, who would be the one participating in these retreats? Do you mean who would be the, the target populations or do you mean right. who would be the presenters? Who would be the target population? It would be, for example, with African American students, it would be African American students, <coughs> freshmen. Uh, for Chicano Latino students, it would be Chicano Latino freshmen and so forth and so on. So I would recommend if it's African American <coughs> topic that it's open to you, you can't segregate them out i mean that's that's an issue here public university you can't right. say well you know only black students can come to this and and it be presented by the university so how do you gonna what do you i have a comment that's the law i'm sorry you can't do it um well you i can't would just exclude people based on race yeah, I would say definitely within the spirit of the task force, I don't think um, any recommendation intends to exclude or marginalize any group. We're trying to, you know, support, you know, students that struggle on this campus. I appreciate that, but the language has to be clear because okay. the last thing you want is a recommendation where somebody comes back and says, well, I'm going to sue you. Cause okay. This is then we can add the, the language open to all students. So all right, the topic so would be ethnic specific. And it could be open to other students. So convene, let's get the language, okay? Okay. Convene ethnic specific leadership retreats during the fall semester to facilitate the transition of frosh and transfers. Actually, uh, we could add the word uh, convene ethnic specific themed. Ethnic specific? Themed. Just like the theme housing does not exclude uh, folks who are not of that group, this would be a theme. What about ethnic theme leadership recruits? Or what do you say? I'm trying to. Uh, I mean, ethnic themed. Ethnic themed? leadership retreats, That's right? So the theme yeah, yeah, with deals with that. With that. Yeah. Yes? No, I don't think you have to. Go ahead. I can see ethnic themed, I, I could see how you wouldn't, that would not be excluding anyone. I'm just trying to figure out how that differs from the orientation that already <coughs> takes place. Could that be accomplished just by expanding the current orientation process? Um, and this seems like it should fall under orientation rather than campus climate. You are talking, talking about frosh and you're talking and about, well, I'm talking about Yeah, long story short, I'm talking about 
an event which brings students together to discuss topics which take more than 30 to 45 minutes as we do in orientation. Uh, that go through a host of experiences and issues specific to that group. Uh, other students would be welcome to attend it. That might actually be a good thing so it would sensitize people to the kind of things that it would do. So it's not much different than the ethnic theme housing. Uh, I got it. I got okay. it. So, so I, I'm, I'm open okay to the language. I got you. So you're okay with themed, ethnic themed retreats, leadership retreats? Yes. Okay. Because that doesn't exclude, that doesn't exclude anybody. Mm -hmm. It says ethnic themed. Okay. So I'm going to put that language in and what is the uh, task force's view on this? Are we on board with that? Uh, Chris? Uh, I would like to also, just in the way it's written, clarify that it's for students. Because when I first read that, I wasn't sure if it was you know, students, faculty, staff. So convene ethnic themed leadership retreats for students during the fall semester. All right, but and he says specifically to facilitate the transition of frosh and trans, so it's for yeah, frosh so for, yes. and transfer students. Yes, yeah, so I would keep the frosh and transfer students part. All right, other comments, Linda? I think I have a remaining concern um, as I'm trying to figure, translate into what this would look like. If you have a, an ethnic themed leadership retreat and one of those is say Latino Latino or Asian American or whatever, um, students aren't gonna be able to attend multiple ones just because of cost. I, w I think I would prefer to see students attend one where multiple themes are addressed all at one time. <coughs> So that seems a little bit restrictive to me. I could be wrong, but that's my reaction to that. Comment? Um, yes, Gary, and then Marcos. Um, I want to address your first point in which you said that uh, this is something that should be added on to, um, to the freshman orientation. Um, I think before I stated that. Um, I dropped that. You, right. Well, I would just say that, you know, like nothing like that exists in freshman orientation, so something like that should exist during during frost orientation, but I think it should be separate from this. I would imagine this being more like leadership today, except, you know, ethnic theme leadership today is um, the way I imagine it. Um, that was just my comment. Marcos. So um, we've done things like this in the past and uh, found it really beneficial. When we do this, for example, for Latino students, one of the things we talk about is like language. A lot of Latino students grow up thinking and learning that Spanish language um, isn't a good thing, that it's actually a detriment to them. So by doing a focused kind of discussion about the strengths of that, it gives them a sense of empowerment and um, helps them see themselves in a different light. Um, doing that, there's like several pieces that we do to that work, and so doing that in a focused environment allows them that opportunity. That's the reason behind um, a, a recommendation like the one that Mike was making. Okay, let me, let me suggest that this does not say there has to be one big retreat or separate. It leaves it to whoever's gonna put these out there to put these together. So this says convene ethnic themed leadership retreats. It could be one retreat, could be many, depending on budget, or whatever. Um, and I would put the S in a parenthesis, so it could be a retreat or retreats uh, for frosh and transfer students during the fall semester to facilitate the transition of frosh and transfer students to the San Jose State University. So you're all right with that, Michael? Yes. All right, uh, Will. In some of the material that we read, it talked about um, sexual orientation uh, issues also. And I was wondering, <coughs> not to be too politically correct, but should we convene ethnic, gender, and lifestyle themed leadership uh, retreats? Uh, because as I recall, some of the issues on this campus uh, weren't just limited to uh, ethnicity. <coughs> Anybody uh, have a problem with that? Ethnic, yeah. gender, and, and, and lifestyle. You're referring to yeah, uh, sexual orientation. Okay. That, okay, orientation. Diana, we're going to spend one more minute on this, and we're going to move. So go ahead. Okay, so if you expand that to Lily's point, um, that's basically leadership today. So, <laughs> so it's okay. Yeah. Got your point. Yes. Leadership today doesn't necessarily happen in the fall for the first, I think the intent, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, is that this is for students that are coming in and kind of help them in transition. So LT is more later on, um, okay. typically. All right, let's uh, decide what we're going to do on this. So here's what the language I have. Convene ethnic, gender, lifestyle theme, leadership retreat, retreats, 
uh, for FROSH and transfer students during the fall semester <coughs> to facilitate the transition of FROSH and transfers into the SJSU environment? Uh, I really just want to emphasize really quick why something that was necessary. Um, as you may know, for example, for African American students, we only are 3% of the campus, so you know we, uh, we often don't have time to interact with, with each other, meet each other, you know, study groups, things like that. So that's why you know something like this is good, you know, for groups who. Are you in favor of this? I'm in favor. I just want I just want to emphasize that we do need something new, you know, not just a expanded leadership today. Okay, got it. <coughs> Linda, you said something, and then we gotta decide. Just a comment on the wording. I think you can take out the frosh, etc., and just put students. Yes. And then it's transition into whatever. The Cause transition of frosh. In other words. Give, give me your language, just read it. Convene ethnic, gender, and lifestyle themed leadership retreats during the fall. For students. Yeah, for students during Period. the fall semester. Yeah. For students. For students during the fall during semester, semester and then the rest Got of it. it stands. No problem. All right. I have a qu concern, yes. a question, I guess. What do you mean by lifestyle? That's what you just said. That's, explain it. That's lesbian, gay, bisexual. Mm, that's whatever. more specific sexual orientation. I wouldn't call it lifestyle. Yeah. Sexual orientation. Either way is fine. Let's call it sexual orientation so there's no question about it. Anything else on this one? Another, okay? No, and I meant frosh. Pardon? I meant frosh and transfers. That's what it says. Oh, no, Transition I thought Transition of frosh and transfers. Out. Okay, I all right, are we all right with this language? Yeah. All right, we're moving on. Next we go to faculty administration and staff. The recommendation from Professor Pizarro was delete number five because it's duplicative of number one. Number five reads, require mandatory diversity training for faculty, staff, and administrators. And if you look at faculty and administration under number one, it says, create a campus-wide sustainable diversity education program in which participation by faculty, staff, and administrators is required. I think he's right? Yeah. All right, so we're good on that one. Residential life, um, he recommends, uh, so I put number one in, as you can see, as it is. I think that's right, hold on a second, let me see yes. what I did here. Yes, the right, part so the recommendation part. is to combine the second part of number one, I took it out from the number one there, and put it in the number six. That's his recommendation, so I'm gonna read number six. It says, ensure that all residential life staff trainings include explicit discussions about racial prejudice, racist slash hate symbols, and about how to create an environment in which students will speak up without fear of retribution. And ensure that staff is trained to recognize controversial slash hate symbols and their potential to create a hostile, hostile environment for students. And then number one will just read, ensure that RAs and other residential life staff make frequent visits to observe activities and displays in the common areas of suites and dorms. I'll just add that I was also yes. suggesting we incorporate number 11 in there because it's also a little bit duplicative. I looked at that and I, think it's different. I, I don't know what I did. I think I saw that it was a little different. Let me just see. It adds a little bit of new language, but it's, yeah. it has some overlap. I looked at that one and I just kind of left that one alone. Um, it's up to you all. This dealt specifically with RAs and I just wanted to leave it. I really wanted to cull it out and not embed it in something else. I got you, okay, fine. Comment over here. Yes. And it just I'm has sorry? to do with right the language. Uh, in number one, where we reference the common areas of suites and dorms, I think it's suites and residence halls. The language is residence halls and not dorms, and it's the language we Suites use throughout the Suites and what is it? Residence halls. Is everybody okay with that? That's just the language All right. that's consistent. So I'm taking out dorms and putting in residence halls. Thank you. All right, so what about number six then? Are we all right with the change? Linda. Very quick on number one, you can also take out suites. Resident halls covers it all. Um, I, I don't know. I, I like suites because this thing happened in a suite. Yep. <laughs> that's okay. Yep. That's, that's fine. why. It's I'm not a big I'm just deal. pulling it out because. I do too. So, are we all right with yeah. the, the combination of one and six? All right. So, I have modified number one to change dorms to residence halls, and we'll leave number six with the edits in red. Frosh orientation. This is a revision <coughs> suggested by uh, Michael <coughs> Randall. Um, he wants to add his name to those to be invited to be on a special, uh, to the, appoint a committee of faculty, staff, administrators, and students to reassess frosh orientation and transfer orientation. And then um, I like to use active words, so I put the word invite instead of, you know, any wish where I put invite special task force members, Ellen Lynn, Maria Alanis, and Michael Randall. He wanted to add his name to join that committee. 
Gary? Um, I just want to say since, you know, we're talking about fresh orientation, um, which is something that involves students, you know, we definitely have, you know, the students on this committee, also some who are, you know, directly involved with fresh orientation. So, you know, I definitely think in this language we should probably include students, possibly members of the task force. Yeah, I, I don't want to exclude anybody. These were specifically, if you're saying you want your name on it, fine, but I'm not telling them who to put on that committee. That's not our job. We just want them to do it. So, Tony? I would just say, seconding that, I would recommend that we not add individuals' names, but individuals can be invited to participate because I think the document is clear of individual names and we want to keep it consistent. And I think that those, once the committee is established. So what about just saying invite special task force members to join that committee? <coughs> and then that leaves it open. That could be, that you could get invited, Gary or Chris or whatever. All right, so, I, so the proposal is to take those specific names out. All right, so I'm going to do that. Thank you for that suggestion. So it now reads, um, the first sentence is fine, and the second, invite special task force members to join that committee. All right, okay. Uh, moving on, reporting procedures and policies. This was suggested by Delorme, uh, and her, or in red, I'm gonna start with the second sentence because that's where the edits are. Um, the link, and this is, by the way, a user-friendly link on the website. Um, the link should allow students, staff, faculty, and administrators to report campus-wide incidents anonymously. Publicize the link throughout the campus. Require the Office of Diversity to appoint a staff person to monitor, record, and investigate the postings in a timely manner. Yep. Comments? <coughs> Ellen. Ellen. My understanding, campus-wide, I, I don't think, I'm assuming that you mean all incidents that happen on campus. So not necessarily just incidents that affect the entire campus. That's how I was reading campus-wide. Am I making sense? Yeah. Say it again, one more time. So instead of campus-wide, it's all incidents that happen on campus versus. Right. I want to look to the first sentence. The first sentence says incidents um, of bias-based conduct speech, right? Um, reporting of hate crimes as well as incidents that do not rise to the level of criminal behavior. So that's other things that might not be a hate crime, but enough to warrant somebody's attention, right? So Delorme, when you're saying campus-wide, I, I, I don't understand what the problem is with campus-wide. I'm not it, understanding. It, it, campus-wide implies that something happened that uh, happened on the entire campus all at the same time versus- That's not how I read it. But well, campus-wide, that's usually when we're saying this should be implemented campus-wide, we mean the entire campus. So when you talk about an incident campus-wide, right, so you're also implying the same thing. Got it. So what about to report incidents on the campus? Yes. Exactly. Yes. All right, okay, so incident to report incidents <coughs> on the campus, right? Yes. How about incidents that occur on the campus? Yeah. All right, incidents, I wanna be real clear on it, that occur on the campus. All right, um, keep going. Yes, Willie. Um, does the Office of Diversity exist now? No. no. All right, that's one of the proposals that you have there. So that's I was correct. thinking that you don't know exactly when that's gonna be created, so I think you don't know, require the university to appoint a staff person, because I don't think you, you, know, you wanna wait um, if incidents occur. So what's your suggestion? Well, and in the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, where it says require the office of diversity yes. appointing, you know, to require the university. Well, no, instead of, we're not saying require the university, we could just say appoint a staff person to monitor, record, and investigate that, that the postings also. in a timely manner. So that means we're not gonna wait around, and if there is an office of diversity, okay, that they might take that over. Is that fair? Is that all right? So I'm gonna change the wording that just says appoint, because we're being active in all this, a staff person to monitor, record, and investigate the postings in a timely manner. Right, all right, moving on. <coughs> Number two, uh, this is from Professor Pizarro. Ensure that the VP of Student Affairs, the VP of Finance and Administration, and here's his edit, the Vice President of Diversity, Engagement, and Inclusive Excellence, and other executive level officials, and then the rest of the sentence remains the same. Uh, so he's added this position that we're recommending be created. Any problem with that? No. All right. Question. Yes. Could we not just exclude all of that and just say that executive level officials and, other, and the campus police immediately inform because there are other offices to which a question might be raised. 
I, I appreciate executive level. Yeah, I'm going to make a comment about that. I appreciate that, but I want to specifically call this out because we are making this a major recommendation. And I, I really want to call out the name of that official. It doesn't mean excluding other right. people, but I think it's really important to name because that's the person we want. It's a major <laughs> recommendation. I, Garrett. I, I'll just concur with that point. I definitely think um, a name is important and powerful, and uh, we can just say that, you know, the duties of the position, you know, will be, you know, containing the name so that they know what's trying to Okay. Uh, All right. So we're okay with number two? <coughs> yes. Coach Ryan. What about the president's cabinet? Because that's pretty much who the majority of that's these people are. That's other executive are. level. Okay. And I, I mean, if you want to mention it, fine, but I, I don't think we need to. If they don't recognize they need to let their cabinet know, then that's a problem, right? So it says other executive level. Do you want to include cabinet? No. You all or what? No. Well, language okay? No, Michael? actually, I would get rid of the AVP of finance and administration. I don't think people perceive access to that. And I might insert the provost. But I'm just saying, in terms of who people perceive access, it wouldn't be the finance guy. I need you to use the mic. It That's seems fine. that it, it's, I think the intent there, uh, I'm not, it's not my language, but it seems that there's a minimum number and actually this addresses two people who were cited as not informing this last incident. So um, is your view to leave this as is? Yes, right. it is. I other, think it's covered. Other comments? Yes, Chris. I, I actually agree with adding provost. I think it's good to specify the provost in there as well. So I'd leave it, leave it as is except adding provost. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. All right, I'm going to put after the VP of diversity engagement, the provost, and then the other language will remain the same. Yeah. We all right with this? All right, moving on. Number five. Uh, this is uh, proposed by Professor Pizarro. Uh, second sentence, actually for the people who aren't here and don't have this, I'll read the two sentences. Create a user-friendly link on the housing website where residents can feel free to raise their concerns with the option of reporting anonymously. Publicize the link throughout the campus. And this is the edit. Publicize to students, faculty, and staff information about all locations on the campus where bias-based incidents can be reported. Okay, so that was deleting number 14 and putting it up in this section. Okay, all right, we're good, moving on. Number seven, uh, Professor Pizarro kept me busy, let me tell you. All right, uh, this is his further edits. This is on number seven, and I'm gonna go, this is a very long run-on sentence. I mean, it is a long sentence. Um, so here we go. Require the university administration, in collaboration with the Academic Senate, student leaders and staff, to review all campus policies specific to bias, discrimination, hate violence, and bullying for the purpose of determining the adequacy of the policies to meet current expectations regarding the establishment and maintenance of a campus free of bias, discrimination, hate, violence, and bullying, and transformative measures and such as, thank you, as cultural sensitivity training and progressive disciplinary actions. Up to and including expulsion, this is the edit, expulsion from admission to the university, or should be expulsion from the, from the university. university. Yes, yeah. that's it. Hold on a second. Or termination from employment with the university. And he recommends delete such as the legacy of hate in America. And there's so much verbiage in this, uh, I agree with it. This is a long sentence. And I might work on just putting it into two sentences at some point. Yeah. But just generally, uh, with the words uh, expulsion and termination from, are we all right? It's a long sentence, and I am going to try to work it. All right, not hearing anything, we're moving on. Number eight. Uh, eight is as it is. I'm not, there's no suggested changes, but I put it there because nine and 11 say that Nine is duplicative of number eight. So I wanted you to see what eight looks like. So here's number nine. This is from Professor Pizarro. Develop a coordinated campus response matrix for incidents of bias, discrimination, hate, violence, or bullying. Publicize the matrix. All right. So eight says develop a matrix that describes all policies specific to bias, discrimination, hate, violence, and bullying specifies time periods for documenting and communicating the occurrence of incidents of bias, discrimination, hate, comma, uh, violence and bullying, 
documents the actions taken and recommended actions to be taken in response to the incidents and publicize the measures throughout the campus. So his belief is, and I concur, that number nine is duplicative of number eight. Agreed? Yes. Go ahead. I agree that they are duplicative. Uh, would there be value in number, if we keep number eight, in adding develop a coordinated campus response matrix. Those words are not. Right, not in there. Yep. All right, so if we take those words, thank you, A, and the words are coordinated campus response and put them before the word matrix yes. in number eight. All right, so let's leave that, and then nine is then out. Okay, and let's go to 11. 11, and he recommends deleting this one entirely develop a matrix that shows the university's policies, procedures, and communication protocols for bias, discrimination, hate, violence, and bullying, and include the matrix in all staff and faculty trainings, make the matrix available to students, staff, faculty, and administrators. So I think it's duplicative. We good? All right, that's out. And so eight will have that addition to it. <coughs> Just one thing, I just noticed that the, the last part of that recommendation, number 11, um, include in staff and faculty training and make available to students um, isn't in number eight as it is. I don't know if we I'm need sorry, it. so what, what are you saying? What do you want? Make matrix available. Um, include the matrix in all staff and faculty trainings? Is right. that what you want? Okay. Is that? Yeah, it's not my recommendation, but I'm just wondering if it's worth having it in there. Well, that's well, the question. We what do you all feel? We also say publicize the matrix throughout, throughout the campus. The campus. Right. So I, again, okay. so somewhat duplicative. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, what you're should right. do you want to add the the words um, include them in the the matrix in all staff and faculty trainings? Do you want that in number eight? Yes. Maria, you say? I'm saying no. I think it's duplicative. I, I think it's it is it is. I'm sorry. I think it's fine as it is. All right. So we're going to uh, leave eight as it is and delete eleven. All right, we're going to the last of our timely edits, <laughs> and this is the last edit here, recommendation for implementation. Ex excuse me. Yes. Um, as I'm reading this, I'm, s I'm feeling that the relationship between the campus and their development of this is not also in coordination with an MOU that exists with Santa Clara County government Can you be more specific? Well, right now there is a memorandum of understanding that's signed by the chief of police as part of the protocols on hate crime investigation. And when you say chief of police, what police department? San Jose mm -hmm. University. San Jose University. University Police. Mm -hmm. Chief of police, who is a member of the Chief of Police Association. Um, there is a memorandum of understanding between those chiefs, which includes this chief, on the investigation and certain procedures associated with hate crime. And that was included in one of my recommendations. And so what I'm reading here is a lot of insular dialogue about how you're gonna develop, it, a develop a response to hate bias, but there isn't anything about that relationship back out into the community. What about your number six? On, uh, I'm sorry, it's number six under reporting procedures. So you have a second document. Uh, and that's your, that's the total, all the recommendations. Okay, great. And I'm looking at reporting procedures and policies number six, mm -hmm. require the great. chief of SJSU police department. That addresses it, thank okay. you. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. that was your recommendation. Yes. That's it, all right. Uh, so let's look at this next one. Within 30, this was uh, suggested by Linda and by me, okay. Uh, within 30 days of the receipt of these recommendations, prioritize them and create a timeline for their implementation. Publicize the prioritization and timeline on the university's webpage along with periodic progress reports. A very quick comment. Uh, you asked me before, and, and I, which I appreciated. I actually believe 30 days is perhaps not realistic because we are approaching the end of our semester and this is the time when everybody goes bananas. <laughs> um, I would, Give me I would suggest probably 45 days or 60 days. Or, or do you have a specific date in mind when this should be done by? That's all I'm, you know, I don't know how the university works. Uh, we are finished, you know, it's April t April 17th. 17th. So. Finals are in, uh, start May 12th. But the president's not taking finals. I mean, this is <laughs> about, no, I'm very serious. This is about <coughs> yeah. the administration yeah. saying, 
you know, we, we got to get, get going here. And that's why I put it in. I was like, what, what's the reason for not, it's clear, we've discussed them, so either you're going to I'm sorry, I, 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 ha I would have so. to differ in, well, in that, uh, that it should not be just the president making these determinations. It I should be a campus effort. Yeah, I didn't mean that. I'm saying the president's in charge of doing this, so mm -hmm. the president says, I want these prioritized, and he, I hope he will be a part of that process. Oh, of course. Right? But, so, but so that's I'm, not going to be a top-down okay. process. I'm hearing, and, and I, I hear you. Your faculty, you know how this works. I don't. I, I, um. I put 30 days in because I think this should be done in 30 days. That's just my view. All right, I have your view, oh. and you're thinking should be more like what? 45 to 60. Okay. Uh, I was gonna, uh, hold on, hold on, Rick. Madam Chair, I'd like to go ahead and, uh, and in your theme of the never-ending task force, uh, add on <laughs> what I had sent out by email, which is um, adding to this language, reconvene the task force quarterly over 12 months to provide updates and solicit feedback and further recommendations. Okay. So that would. So that was an email you sent, and uh, let me just make sure I have all that. Um, so read your language again, please, Rick. So this would tie in and add just, on to your. So starting from the end of with along with periodic progress okay. reports, would say comma, and reconvene the task force quarterly over 12 months to provide updates and solicit feedback and further recommendations. All right, so I'm gonna weigh in first. Uh, I, I'm opposed to that recommendation. I'm, this task force is done today, I'm done. Um, and it was selected for a, a limited period of time, and I, I don't know, Rick, I read this one, and it was sort of like, this is academia. I mean, it was in academia for eight years, you know, at Stanford, it's like, it's just never ending. It's like, <laughs> we gotta, you know, closure and get stuff done. So, that's my, my spiel on it. I, my preference is to give the university a deadline to say, either you're gonna do this or you're not, and if you are, you're gonna prioritize them, you're gonna give us a timeline, and you're gonna make it as transparent as this process was. So, that's just my view on that one. Let's hear other views on Rick's, because this is kind of like a friendly amendment to this. All right, Gary. Um, I would just say it's unfortunate that uh, if this task force continued that you wouldn't be a part of it. You know, that would definitely be a shame. But regardless, um, my point. Uh, I have a day job. <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> no, I understand. You know, as well. And it's year round. You know, um, don't get a but uh, I think Rick's point and also Linda's point um, touched on what I'm going to emphasize is that, you know, with this current administration, you know, you see a lot of decisions being made towards the end of the semester. Once the semester is actually over, and you know, you know what that, or you know what ends up happening from that is that there's no very little or no accountability at all for the decisions that are being made. And, you know, as you might have seen through the emails that, you know, a lot of you know, the anxiety is because there won't be any accountability for the administration. And this administration certainly needs someone to be held accountable for the, these recommendations and the direction the university is taking. Okay, Delorme. Okay. Um, the frequency um, I might want to reduce, but I really do feel that the administration should be accountable back to this task force after all this work is done to see if progress has been made. Okay, but I guess my response is, so if our recommendation were the one that I floated, which says publicize your priorities, your timeline, and give us everybody, not just task force, periodic reports, why would we need to have another group sit here? It just seems to me we're layering on. It's like we're laying it out there. Here it is. You asked us to do a job. We've done it. Now it's your turn. Oh. Okay. Quick response. That's all. Tony. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I would say uh, in terms of the committee, in, uh, on page one, we talk about number five, reactivating the campus climate committee. I think that might suffice in terms of the accountability piece that people are looking forward to in terms of sharing it, that information. Secondly, I think that 45 days would probably be uh, a more realistic approach. I'm not for the 60, but I think 30 really pushes uh, the process. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, but that's okay. I got it. I got it. Yes. No, I, I agree with you. Task forces should come to an end. Um, and you should use an existing body, from my perspective, to uh, carry on, like the Campus Climate Committee. Um, because then you start getting into administrative stuff. You know, I didn't like this, or I didn't like that. Um, so I just agree with you that, you know, we do our job, and we go out of existence. That's just from my perspective. Um, in terms of prioritization, I, I got, again, 45 time, 45 day, I think, is a better time frame. Uh, in terms of prioritization, you know, part of me likes that and part of me thinks that um, whatever prioritization they, they put, someone's going to say they left mine down at the bottom. Sure. I mean, we're, we're submitting a package, and um, so 
I'm less concerned about a prioritization because they're gonna have a list which for the most part I think everyone feels constitutes a, a, a priority set of recommendations out of the many, many more that could have been given. But I'm fine either way. But again, my, okay. my main point is the task force should cease to exist. Other Just comments? I'd like to hear from more people. Yes. Well, no, I, I'd like to address it again in terms of where we are. And I'll talk about why I want to use a public process to make sure that we're holding basically the university's feet to the fire. The, the one thing we could do, you could post anything on the internet and, I on the, on, and all you can do is scream at the computer screen. You cannot make recommendations back. I would like someone to be able to come here so we can ask the kind of tough questions that we've asked of the folks that are here and make these uh, tough recommendations back. So if the prioritization, I agree, you'll probably say, why isn't mine number one when it's number 20 or 30? But at least we have the opportunity to have dialogue. This would give the opportunity for further dialogue. The last thing I want to see is a continued, never-ending task force, but I don't want to just hand over a book and say, here's what we think, and then all we can do is question the computer screen. Okay. Uh, Ellen. So if we don't reconvene, I like the recommendation of the campus climate, but we also need to then build in that recommendation of a campus climate to have more authority and to have that responsibility. And that right now, it's Chris? Yeah, I, what I'm hearing in spirit is that there's a desire to have a level of accountability publicly. Yes. What I would like to see is a campus climate committee, you know, something like uh, within six months having an open forum campus climate committee where members of the campus community can come together to maybe discuss, have a public forum. One of the things that I'll say is, in my, this is simply in my opinion, I think that one of the problems, and this is just from my point of view, one of the problems that we've had is sometimes that there's a lack of public discussion of problems that everybody knows goes on all the time. And so I do like that, you know, in, in essence, the spirit of that recommendation to have some sort of public, within the campus, I don't mean public, general public, but some kind of meeting uh, report back to a campus climate committee where the members of the campus community can be present and hear what's actually happening. We have Again. a recommendation on the campus climate section, and it's number five, and it says reactivate the campus climate committee that is linked to the office of the president and formalized through academic senate policy. And I think that's all we say about that committee. Yeah. So I'm hearing some other things yeah. okay, uh, about that, so I'll go to mm -hmm. Delorme and I'll go to Gary. Again, I, there are three members on this committee that represent the community. And since this hate crime happened, I have spoken every single week by invitation to community members about this incident. There's, this conversation seems to be very insular, and I think you need to understand that the entire community was impacted by this incident, and the entire community is following this. And so whether we meet one time or four times, I don't care. But there should be a report back to the community, not just the campus, about the progress that has been made because the entire community is concerned about this event. All right, so if you were to make a recommendation, I mean, this is, these recommendations are gonna fall in the lap right. of the president. I don't care if it's okay. the campus climate committee or this task force, but if you're gonna have a public forum, have a public forum where the entire community is extended an invitation to receive a report back about the progress that has been made. Okay, but I'm hearing two different things from you now. So one is that since these are going to the president, yeah. all right, we could make a recommendation that says, and I don't know when periodically means, but to, re to release a report on the progress on these. That's one. Mm -hmm. All right, or then I heard you say That's something about- That's available to the entire community, right, not just right, the campus community. Right, but I thought, also I thought you heard, I heard you say maybe bringing, having some sort of a forum. I wasn't sure what you no, were saying. that okay. was mentioned earlier, that All you right. might have forums as part okay. of the campus climate group. Got it. Okay. All right, so let's consider, I'm um, just kind of thinking about, you know, adding some sort of a recommendation about that. I'm gonna Gary, and I'm gonna go to Michael. I just wanted to make uh, one last, um, comment on the subject of accountability. Um, as a student, um, you know, who again, you know, led these protests, you know, who tried to bring these issues to, issues to the administration's, you know, um, table and was ignored, I'm, I, I honestly am concerned about what's gonna happen, you know, next year, uh, you know, once this task force, does, task force doesn't exist. And so I just, like, and I don't know if this recommendation exists or, or if it's, you know, writing on um, Mr. Callender's recommendation or but there needs to be some recommendation that 
is centered around holding the administration accountable for actually implementing these things, and we need to make sure that recommendation is in there. All right, I understand. And, and understand, any time you make something public, you're holding them accountable. Uh, what I'm concerned about is things had happened behind closed doors. And, yeah. and that's why everything we've done here has been transparent, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to put together these ideas that you've put forward, uh, Delorme as well as Gary. Hold on, excuse me. There was a hand over here, Michael. Okay, back to Gary. I'm not talking solely about closed doors. I'm talking about, say, the, uh, the president uh, being aware of recommendations but not taking them into account. Um, and, and, and I'm not talking about our recommendations, I'm talking about over the last few years of, you know, faculty and students trying to raise, you know. But, but Gary, I don't understand what you mean. You can't make, I mean, we can do what we can to hold people accountable, right, by shining the light on it, but we can't do anything more than that to make people do things, right? So yes. I, I'm just saying the more transparency and accountability, then the more assured we may be, we hope that things will happen. Let me suggest something in the wording of the, the one that exists. I'm, I'm not at the, we need to, first we need to talk about do we want to have language that uh, Rick has proposed that convenes the task force, the special task force, um, periodically, be it quarterly or whatever. He says quarterly. No, it doesn't mean okay, so I mean, my view, I'm, I'm just against that. Um, but if the you know, majority of folks want that, you need to tell me and then I'll write up the language. Bernadette. I would be much more in favor of finding a campus entity, uh, the Campus Climate Committee, and putting it in their hands. I do believe it is important to have an entity that follows along, but I, I, I don't feel that this group is really the appropriate one to do so. I, I, I feel that we have done our job, and it is now, the, it is now time to give it back to San Jose State. Other comments, Michael. Uh, first of all, there is a commission. Uh, I might butcher the language, but there is a presidential commission on campus diversity that exists, that's been existing all year. So that that exists. Uh, my understanding is that was supposed to be the de facto new campus climate committee. Uh, so it exists. So that's number one. Number two, I also think that the committee's done its job, and there comes a time when task forces and committees must end. That said, however, I do not fundamentally believe or necessarily trust the institution to hold itself accountable. So I'm at a quandary. On the one hand, I, I do agree that we've done our job, we should move on, and people should go back to their lives. Perhaps something should be convened that allows people, and it's just another entity, not us, and some of the, the people here might still be on that entity, uh, so I'd like to simply recommend the following. One, that the campus be given 45 days to, and I won't use the word prioritize, but identify, identify the recommendation that's gonna follow. Because I think it's a bit presumptuous for us to sit here and think, because we give people recommendation, they're supposed to follow them. So uh, that I kind of reject, even if I was the person giving recommendations. Okay. I'll tell you flat out, I, I, recommendation is just recommendation. That said, I would like to know of the recommendation which ones are gonna be identified to be followed, then I can go ahead and, and go along with you on that. Uh, two, we can take an existing body, because I, I'm on the committee I just mentioned, so I, I would be a committee member on this, and I ain't, I'm not gonna lie, we've been looking for something to do. We met four times and haven't done nothing. So this will give us something to do. Uh, and you can build on that and add other people and welcome community members <coughs> into that, because we do need to be held accountable externally, uh, because we've been living internally for about, what, 150 years now? And here we are, <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with the spirit mm -hmm. of what Rick is saying. The issue is how do we construct it? And it might be to take an existing entity and to welcome members of the task force to join it or to just create another entity altogether. But I do agree with this, this idea that there should be an external uh, accountability mm -hmm. mechanism. Okay, George, uh, Rick? I, you know, I, I want to address something because I, I don't necessarily think that it has to be the task force. What my issue is is the accountability and the ability to report back and question. Right now, the, the, the ability isn't there. You can write an angry letter, but it doesn't have to be answered. I like this to be done in public, so I don't know if it's another committee, if it's a new committee, if it's this committee. That's not where my issue is. My issue is public accountability. I got it. All right, let, let me make some observations if I can. 
Uh, first of all, Michael, I, I do take issue with your saying we should say identify and not prioritize because we shouldn't assume that these recommendations are going to be adopted, all of them. I, I hear you. I am making the assumption that they are going to be rec they are going to be adopted. Okay. So I mean that's where I am, and maybe I'm you know way out there, but I am, uh, and that's why by my saying our saying prioritize, we are making an assumption, and I, I don't think it's inappropriate. I mean, and, and sure, realistically, there may be no budgetary things for something. I understand that, but then they're going to have to get back to us on that. That's, I mean, to the public about it. So that's just a, 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 an observation on your comment. I'm looking at all of our recommendations thus far about how any of them deal with accountability. So what we've got, uh, we have the matrix, which we say has to be publicized, right, about all the policies, all the incidents. We've asked for somebody to monitor them all. We have the MOU language that takes us out of just being insular. We've got that, and that's police. We've got a recommendation, which is a huge one, which is to create this office of diversity with someone who's going to get out and do all these kinds of things that has to be properly funded. Um, and I just believe that all of that, along with a recommendation that deals with implementation, 45 days hence, that says you have to let everyone know, and I don't mean just campus, publicly know. You, Mr. President, have to let us know, the world know, what are the, how are you prioritizing these? What's the timeline? And we're saying, give us, us, the world, reports back on what's happening at San Jose State on these. I, I just don't, I, I don't know how much more one can do, because I keep hearing we'll have another committee, I, bureaucracy, and that's, that kills things, you know? So I'm, I'm concerned about too much bureaucracy, and at the same time, I hear you on accountability, and that's why I think we've built in quite a bit as I've looked at all of these now. So again, uh, other observations? Point of clarification. Michael. Okay. The, the reason I, I, I chose to deal with the word prioritize is because unbeknownst to many of the committee members here, there are quite a few of these recommendations being worked on and they're being worked on with speed. A number of recommendations with respect to orientation, um, I'm involved in that. The RA thing is being worked on. Theme housing already exists. And I think I sent an email to that. So my point with prioritization is to me, Prioritization means we're going to do this first, do this second, do this third. That said, do we stop doing, and I know nobody means stop doing ahead, anything, but since the way we tend to divide our work at the institution is we kind of assign it different people and people move at different rates of speed, I'm just saying, unless we want to clarify that prioritization does not necessarily mean one, two, three, because five, six, seven are already happening. You guys just don't know but about Then they it. write completed, done, okay. done, right? done. Okay, whatever that is. And then you have is, whatever's left, question. then you Already say, okay, done. this is what we're going to do next, and this is when we're going to do it, and this is what we're going to do next, and this is when we're going to do it. That's what prioritization and timelines are. And if they're serious about this, it shouldn't be a problem. I, I think or, the other way of talking sorry, about Linda. prioritization is in time frames. So, you know, like the university, for example, saying uh, our intent is to accomplish this within the first six months, the first three months, the first year, whatever. It may not be because one they think is more important than the other, but one they think is doable in the time frame. So there are a lot of different ways yeah. the That's university fine. can approach this. And we're not telling them yeah. how. We're just saying prioritize Agreed. and let everyone know. So we want to keep transparency. Well, All right, uh, just, Tony. Just want to say, I think, and you hit it on the head, uh, just the notion of the timeline is in here. And so when you talk about the prioritization and everything else, we also have the language of creating and implementing a timeline, and that's so important in the accountability mode. Who has access to the university's webpage? Anybody? My, my wireless anybody? isn't working, but I can try it. Well, well I'm just saying, can, uh, no, my question is really general. So, I mean, anybody in the world, uh, yes. if they want to okay. go on. Okay, I thought you meant right now. No, 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 not right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to address this whole accountability and what's, who can see it and what, and it, I don't want it buried somewhere on the webpage. I mean, I want something that really stands out that says, you know, clearly identify this is the work that's being done, and here's our timeline, and these are things as they're completed. I'm sorry, Linda? You just put the link on the homepage. Not I mean, I want it clear. I don't want it buried that's anywhere, I mean. right? Exactly. Right there on the homepage. So, so let me just kind of add a little thing. Go right ahead. I, I think the issue of accountability it, it comes from those of us who've been here for a minute and who have, are just scared. 
we, we see you all. We have a president here. We have a VP here from other campuses. We have Judge Cordell here. We like you. We like you being here. We like you pointing the finger at these issues. I think, so I think that's where this comes from. And we're not going to resolve it here today. But, but the concern is that you all are going to leave, and this is going to be highlighted for a minute, and then it's going to be brushed under the rug. It's, and I think that's what we're all concerned about. So it's our responsibility for the folks here on campus to make sure that it doesn't happen. Um, to publicize it. It's the responsibility of the media to come back to San Jose State, not just when things are hot, but to come back later on and say, what are you all doing? Um, so that's what I hope will happen, and that, that all of us on this committee will ask the university these questions out loud and talk to the media when we need to about these issues. Okay. Other, yes, Maria. Um, I hear what Delorme and Rick are saying. Uh, the community is very invested in this issue. Uh, we've had people who have attended every one of these meetings and they've been sitting out listening um, and at social events, dinner with friends, this is a topic that's being discussed. And I think what they're saying is that um, there needs to be some type of feedback process. And I'm not saying that this task force should continue, but uh, there needs to be some type of feedback process where community has some input in terms of the progress uh, with which these recommendations are being implemented. And it can be anything. It could be in six months there's an open forum. I don't, that's just a recommendation. But I think what they're saying is that there needs to be some connection. Right. Do you, so you have a proposal? I would recommend that Delorme or Rick come up with the proposal. I'll say, you know, in six months, if there be a public forum where community can come and participate and, and speak to the progress of these uh, impl implementation of these recommendations. Okay. That would satisfy uh, Gabrielle, me. Gabrielle, no, 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 Gabrielle, and then I'll get to Delorme. So the recommendation would kind of read like this, create public forums with the campus and San Jose community during the year on the progress of the recommendations. Right, it's I, th I think instead of create, I think you want to host or convene. Host. All right, convene public. Give me your language again, please, Gabrielle. Convene public forums with the campus and San Jose community. Hold on, hold on. Campus and the San Jose community? Yes. Go ahead. During the year on the progress of the recommendations. All right, instead of during the year, how about just convene periodic public forums I don't want to leave it, you know, I want to, suggestions, I mean, you want to just put during the year? Within the first year. How about within the first year? I mean, we want to Periodic keep the momentum. Within the first year. Yeah. What's the, I'm hearing periodically, I'm hearing within the first year, I'm hearing, do we want to just limit it to the first year? No. Do you want to? No, I don't. No. All right, Ellen? No, I'm just only saying that. I understand. So that it's not forever, yeah. you know. Well, yeah. maybe no, we I need them forever. Not, I don't no, know. No, I mean not waiting forever. <laughs> So convening, convene periodic public forums with campus, the campus and San Jose community on the progress of the implementation of the recommendations. On progress of, um, okay, I'll come up with some language. Implementation of the recommendations. And the first of which would be convened within the first year. Well, Madam Chair, I was going to suggest within this two public forums, if we're going to do them, two year? public forums within a 12-month period. He wants two, no, so it'll be was, every six months. I was going months. to suggest two public forums within months. a 12-month period, so that there's a confined end, so that you'll have one public forum to give an update, a second public forum that would provide where we are and what's going on and would allow for public input and questions. So we could do once a semester? I was just going to say before the end of the fall, before the end of fall 2015, or 2014, yeah, fall 2014. All right, so let me go back. Convene public forums each semester with the campus and San Jose community to uh, review, discuss progress on the implementation of the recommendations. No? Yes? Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to 
that is a separate recommendation. I'll add that. And we're back to the recommendation now uh, within 45 days of the receipt of these recommendations, prioritize them and create a timeline, publicize all of that on the university's home page along with periodic <coughs> progress reports. What's your pleasure? All right, no, yes, 45, all right. All right, so that's it. Now, we have completed the discussion of the edits that came in in a timely fashion, and let's look to edits that came in a little bit later, like yesterday and today and <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, so let's see. Will that also include um, proposed edits that are extraordinarily untimely, like today? <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all are wrong, you know? Just, I'm even trying to find where I put all those. I can do it while you're looking. Uh, let's just hold on, just hold on a second here. Let me get everything that's come in. And bear, bear with me, well, let's just take, take a break here. Let me just get, make sure I have all of my edits in. Okay, let me just take care of all these. And what you all can take a stretch break if you want. Let me just get these down. A food break for a minute. Let me just check on this. Okay, these came in. Okay, I have them. Called them my last minute edits. All right. So, uh, let's see, I've got something from Professor Lynn, and uh, you wanted to, I'm not sure what you wanted on yours. You sent me something I think a couple today. of mine have already been addressed, but I was just noticing that in the faculty, staff, uh, and administrative section, we only specify the faculty, um, okay. let, me, let me find the item actually. So what you have. So number two, yes. link faculty engagement and diversity training directly to retention, tenure, promotion. It doesn't address management and staff on campus. So I'd like to expand that to the other all right, so currently it says link faculty engagement in diversity training directly to retention, tenure, and promotion. Right. Right? So that stays. And what do you want to add? So I put link engagement in diversity training and displays diversity competence skills directly to management and staff performance evaluation. Link, the word, you come back, coming after the word faculty, link, Engagement. Well, we can't add. We can't just add management and staff because they don't. Those two no, categories no, that, don't have the tenure process. That's not my question. Okay. So you want the words to say link faculty engagement in diversity training. That stays. Yeah. That's that and stays. it's a separate item. It's a separate sentence. Is what I'm looking okay. at. Okay. All right. So that's one sentence. So what's yes. your next sentence? So also link. And displays, but that doesn't link engagement and diversity training and displays diversity skills. So these are the titles of links. Oh, I'm trying to. No, I'm sorry. It's not a. It's not no, I want these specific skills and the diversity training be added to their performance evaluation. Like, have those components be added as got part it. of the evaluations. Got it. All right. So I think I got it. And you want it in that particular recommendation? No, it doesn't have it's a, so It could be a separate one. So when but you I'm say. But I'm just tying to that one because that one only addresses the faculty. All right. All right. But I want to get straight. When you use the phrase displays diversity competent skills, meaning that's some criteria we're going to look at in right. evaluating performance. Correct. Right. Right? So, and that's the evaluating the performance of staff. And administrators. And administration. All right. So do you want that to be a separate recommendation? Yes, please. Within there? 
Yes. All right. So, so you want we gotta. All right. Let me come up with some language here. So it has to be. Um, let's see. So that will be number eight. Okay, Tony. Uh, would remind us all that anytime we talk about performance evaluations, we are in a collective bargaining state, and Just therefore can't you it. can't do it. And it's a bargainable uh, item, and we cannot include it in anyone's performance evaluation. So you can't make them do it. Yeah. So we can. That's true for RTP as well, because that is under collective okay. bargaining as well right. as under Senate policy. So we can't make them do it. Well, these are all recommendations, but all of ours have been in the affirmative, like do this, do that. So this would be one that just says we, you know, recommend. Judge Cordell, no, I yes, just had a question. It's probably for the folks who are more knowing about this than me. Now, you talked about performance um, evaluations, Mr. Ross. Does that also include the student evaluation of teachers? Are those considered performance evaluations? No, they're not. No. Okay, so those. No. I, I don't think we can make it, we can't make it a requirement. Are we saying we want to recommend that this factor, displays diversity competence skills, be put one of the criteria for measuring staff performance and administrative performance. We can recommend it, but. We could recommend the administrative one because that's not under bargaining unit. Yes, you can do that for managers. Those in the MPP plan. You so manage, so administrators, you could. Yes. All right, so do you want to make your recommendation that address it to administrators? That we add displays diversity competence skills as a performance evaluation, as part of their performance evaluation. All right, what's the take? Well, what's, what do people feel about like it? Like, how, how, would, how would you implement that? Like, I mean, I, I don't really understand how you would do that or, or. Somebody would apparently have to help the management <laughs> define competencies and diversity. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little troubled with this. I, I'm, I'm a little, and we've been real clear on all of our recommendations here. We're number, I am troubled with number two as well because it does have the collective bargaining competition. I'm sorry, which one now? Under the, the where we started, number two under faculty administration and staff. Okay, hold on. Well, wait a minute, let's, let's finish this one. It is, it's connected. Well, okay. All right, so let's just finish, all right. So we, we acknowledge you can't add things to performance evaluations for, for staff if they're, if they're union because you, you just can't do that. So now we have administrators. Do you all want to add that language or not? Come on, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, what? Chris? I, you know, I definitely agree with the issue when it comes to faculty. You can't, you really can't include that in our RTP process. When it comes to management though, you know, I, I'm just thinking that we're in the spirit of making recommendations and that it's not necessarily our job to figure out exactly how every detail would be implemented. I think that it's possible to recommend that, you know, that whatever words you want to put to it, that a level of diversity training be recommended in inclusion for, for management. Well, I mean, the but language, is, the language is clear. You just yeah. write, include, quote, displays diversity competent skills in the performance evaluation criteria for administrators. I mean, that's clear. Yeah. So, I mean, right now, uh, faculty evaluations have an item that says, uh, it rates faculty on their ability to um, engage diverse students or something like that. I'm not sure what the language is exactly, but it has diversity in there. And that's part of faculty evaluations and that's part of what they get um, reviewed in RTP on. The, pr the problem here is that you're ask asking not what they do, but you're asking them to, to link RTP with diversity training. And that's, that is a collective bargaining issue. The university does not necessarily have any direct power in their ability to do that. So you're asking them to do something that the, the bargaining contract could disallow, in which case they cannot do it. That's all I'm saying that is that realistically it doesn't make any sense. And for those that don't know, the bargaining contract is for the entire CSU. It's not just for San Jose State. All right, so let's go back, all right? So we have, it is possible to include a recommendation about a performance evaluation skill for administrators. Is that correct? Yes. yes. All right, there's no bargaining unit, there's no union. All right, so one possible, here's the wording, and I just need to know whether or not you want to do this, include
the displays diversity competent skills in the performance evaluations of administrators. So do you want to go with that or not? Because that's the only one we can go with if we're going to do this at all. Silence means no, yes, what are we saying? Linda's shaking her head no. Chris? I just wanted to get a point of clarification. So you're suggesting doing that for number two and instead of doing no. that for faculty. So, oh, so I, you're doing it as a separate I, I item. I just put it, no, no, no. All I did was write a number eight and okay. write that language. So we can go back and look <coughs> at number two right now. But I want to get just this recommendation. Include displays diversity competence skills in the performance evaluation for administrators. Yeah. All right? So, all right, so we're going to, yes? Would it be clearer to say um, include assessment of diversity competence skills sure. without putting right? in the quote like quotation marks. Yes. Okay, and that makes no more sense. All right, like so include, that. give me your language, please. Assessment of diversity competence skills. And Got it. Got it, no quotes. All right, we good? All right, now let's go back to number two that was raised under faculty administration staff. It reads now, link faculty engagement in diversity training directly to retention, tenure, and promotion. So is there a problem with that? Okay, tell, collective speak bargain. to it, just speak to it. It's a collective bargaining issue. Okay. Tony, you're the kind of expert on this. Is that, do we need to walk away from that one? I think we need to walk away from that one. Yes. Because right. again, it's a CSU collective bargaining uh, really? mandate. Okay, Ellen? So correct me if I'm wrong, I think campus specific could make changes to SOCES. The What's that? So, 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 student, right, but I'm thinking that that's where we could build this in. But that, that, this not, the, not the retention, tenure, promotion, but that that be part of the evaluation from students of the faculty. Members. I would see that as a completely separate issue because this item is addressing engagement and diversity training, not necessarily yeah. relationship with students around diversity. So I, I, would, right. I would, my recommendation is to eliminate it. Chris? Yeah, I was going to say we need to, uh, I don't support putting that in, you know, I don't support addressing SOTS in this body. All right. What about number two? Should we delete it? Yes. Okay, because it's collective bargaining. We can't tell them. Okay, two is out, and two will become the one we just did, which was include assessment of diversity common skills in the performance evaluation for administrators. Okay? All right, so that's going to be number two. All right, um, now Willie, you have one. Yes. All right. <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> I mean, we just uh, heard, I saw that um, the uh, Vice President for Student Affairs who's here is going to be returning to the faculty. And so I thought an appropriate recommendation would be to the President to hire a highly experienced Vice President of Student Affairs with demonstrated experience in building and strengthening campus diversity programs. Would you read it again for me, please? And slow it down a little bit? Hire a highly experienced Vice President of Student Affairs with the demonstrated experience in building and strengthening campus diversity programs. I'm just saying that, you know, this opening, I think I just saw that today or whatever, so I'm, I'm just, it's a reminder that if you're bringing in a senior administrator in an area or that oversees housing, all the things we've talked about, um, assess their experience or background. I mean. I think it's a, it's a, it's a reasonable criteria uh, in today's world of student affairs. All right, observations, comments? So you're not saying that this position actually be the VP of diversity, the Office of Diversity. You're talking about that this be part of the VP of Student Affairs? Well, your recommendations on diversity came out before we knew that the uh, current Vice President of Student right. Affairs was gonna return to faculty. So I'm just saying that a senior administrator is an opportunity um, for the president to look at the background of a position that oversees all the areas that led to the, uh, our discussions here. I would then recommend that that not be exclusive to that position, but all the, the future VP searches. Yeah, I, I think a very, I agree wholeheartedly, and I think that the simple way of doing that is just ask that all future uh, administrative hires include the diversity in position descriptions as a requirement for the position. So I, 
Okay. I'm saying it off the top. Uh, okay, okay, you're so, looking for language. I so, know. So you're trying to make not just for one position, but yeah. If if you're if you're doing student affairs, I'd say required. If you're doing all of them, um, then in some you'd say it's desired. I'm not sure if you're chief financial officer um, or your chief advancement officer. I think they you want them to, but they might necessarily might not necessarily come with that. Some of your advancement officers come out of the foundation world, and uh, their expertise is, is raising money. Um, and you can have them trained, you can build it into their requirements as we've talked about earlier. But I'm just saying that for me, the issue was student affairs. Um, so you can put in everything else, but again, just as we earlier said, we wanted to focus on some issues, right. housing, all these things were in student affairs, so that was I'm, my focus. I'm gonna there. ask you again to read it, please. Hire a highly experienced vice president of student affairs with demonstrated experience in building and enhancing campus diversity programs. So, Ellen? I, I full heartedly agree that yes, it's a very in integral part of student affairs. It's also a very integral part of provost academic affairs. And depending on the campus finance administration uh, org chart, sometimes decisions are made that definitely impact the diversity issues on campus. All right, y'all, where are we on this recommendation? Do you wanna make it specific to this position so we know it just opened up? And do we want to use the word hire, or do you want to, I mean, he has the word, just hire someone that has this kind of experience with, Tony. I would say as, as a sitting vice president for student affairs, I understand where President Hagan is coming from, from a standpoint of, and he now will have a vacancy for a vice president for student affairs on his campus. He's looking to hire one with, and the, the key words were highly experienced vice president for student affairs. And then, that person can have in their portfolio, in their background, the diversity piece. But I think the notion is, you know, to be able to make sure you, have, you hire the right person for the job, and we have an opportunity to say that today. So I would say we listen to the full <coughs> recommendation and not get hung up on in just certain pieces. All right, so Tony, you are in favor of the language that Willie has put forth, all right? So is everybody okay with that language? It's yes. very timely. All right, so Willie, I'm gonna ask you, we'll take a little break before the president arrives at seven, and I want that language, if you could right. write it out clearly for me, and then I will add it. Which section should it go in the faculty, administration, and staff section, yes. okay? And um, maybe, should we make that recommendation number one? Kind of yes. get some attention here? All right, so we're gonna move all these down, and I'll make it December one, this is what we need. All right, um, I believe we, I'm going to, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I hope in the next 24 hours, put these edits all together so we have a final package. Um, I have received an email from um, Marcos and one from Linda about suggestions for a preamble introduction to the recommendations. Thank you so much. If others want to send me something, it's fine. I believe I have the sense of what it is we wanna say. Uh, but I, I welcome that because I'll, I'll put all that together and then uh, I will finalize them. There won't be a draft anymore. It will go out to you all and will be delivered uh, to the president. I intend to, if I can get this done, uh, I, to actually put them in his hands tomorrow. These recommendations, tomorrow. Uh, so um, we will, at seven o'clock, the president will be here and what we will do is I will give any one of the task force members who wants to say anything to the president, you will have two minutes to do so. You don't have to say anything, but if you choose to speak, and I believe me, I will limit you to two minutes, uh, you, and you can say what you need to say in two minutes, uh, you feel free to do it. It is not an opportunity to ask him any questions. This is for you, if you have some thoughts, anything you wanna convey to uh, the president of the university, this is your opportunity to do so. You have two minutes, so we're gonna take a break, 10 minutes, it should be here in 10 minutes, so you can get your thoughts together, if any you have, and then following your statements, the president uh, wants an opportunity to speak to you. Uh, again, it's not a question and answer opportunity. I also wanna acknowledge now that Professor Susan Murray is with us tonight, and thank you so much for all the work you do, uh, and know that when I submit the recommendations, we will have an appendix uh, that will be the recommendation for the Office of Diversity from Professor Haluolani. And uh, 
Um, also know, Professor Murray, I hope you do know already, that one of our recommendations is that you be officially recognized by the university for the work you have done and the contribution you've made. So thank you so much. So we'll take a break, and when the president arrives, we will convene, and you'll have your time to speak to the president of the university. Can I get everybody to seat? We have two cleanup recommendations. It never ends. It never ends. All right. So Peter, Peter has one, and Marcos has one. These are very quick. Clean up and go, Peter. So I'm looking at under frost orientation number two, where it says establish a sliding scale for frost orientation fee from zero dollars to an amount deemed appropriate by the administration. Um, so I spoke with someone from orientation and we kind of talked about how we're not sure of how ethical it is to charge certain students more than other students based on their socioeconomic background. So currently this week, they've already awarded $10,000 in fee waivers for frosh orientation. So I'm recommending that we change the language to establish fee waivers for frosh orientation because that's something that we already do and that's something that already supports students who struggle to afford frosh orientation. All right. Comments? Maria? Okay, that was my recommendation, and I personally know of students who cannot afford anything to go, and I think the uh, waivers are like, they pay 50%. It's, I believe some of them are in full. So how seven. is it publicized? Because okay, it wasn't on the Let's do this, we don't have to send us okay. suggestion. Uh, establish a sliding scale and or waivers. So we leave it in. Yep. And we want to make sure the waivers are there, Good. and then they can do what they do. Okay. I mean, that's just a suggestion. Maria, we okay? With yes, that? that's fine. All right. So establish a sliding scale and or <coughs> waivers. Fee waivers. Fee yes. Waivers. Okay. And or fee waivers. Got it. All right. Marcos. When we were discussing Willie's specific suggestion on the new AVP, um, we missed Ellen's comment, and her suggestion was okay. to ensure that all managers have demonstrated knowledge, skill, and experience working with diverse students. Okay, would you say it again, please? Ensure that all managers have demonstrated knowledge, skill, and experience working with diverse students. All managers? Diverse population, not All right, let's diverse read it diverse again. Diverse population. Okay, one more time. Where and you said managers. What do you mean? That's another question. Where does it under go? The, under the faculty administration and staff section. Okay. And it, are you saying it would be a new recommendation, yes. another one? Yes, okay. Read it again, slowly, with the language. Ensure that all managers have demonstrated knowledge, skill, and experience working with diverse populations. Anybody have a problem with that? It mirrors Think number 14 it. that we have for the RAs. We're asking the same thing of others in different positions. The question is now, this would be, it's it be administration? Is that mm -hmm. what they are? You said, mm -hmm. did you say managers? Yeah, but you mean administ call it administrators? administrators. Yeah, yeah, that's the words we're using. We're not using managers. All right, so uh, everybody okay on that? All right, so will you give me that language, make sure it's clearly written, and then I will add it to the faculty administration staff. All right, so um, I'll put all these together and get these out and deliver them to the president. Um, president Mo is here, and thank you so much for coming. It's 7 o'clock, and welcome. Um, we're going to utilize this time uh, for any uh, task force members who have anything they would like to say to you. It's their opportunity for them to do it. Uh, I've asked people to limit their comments to two minutes. It's not a question and answer. It's just if any thoughts they have that they want to communi communicate to you, they're free to do so. After which, uh, you're free to say anything to us you choose. Thank you. And thank you very much for being here. So we'll just go by raising hands, and, uh, and then you'll just introduce yourself again. Hi again, Willie Hagen, President of Cal State Dominguez Hills. Um, I want to uh, just say two quick things. One, I wanted to thank uh, Judge Cordell for the leadership, leadership she brought. Well, I know, I'm, I'm thanking him through you. That's fine. Um, because, I mean, in reality, this, this kind of, a, of, of work is difficult. And not only you know, in terms of the topic and the issues, but you know, corralling this larger group. And there was many a time where uh, Cordell made it clear that she was the judge. And uh, that was very helpful in keeping us on task. So I, I do appreciate that. And I also do want to you know, thank Mo uh, for inviting me to be on this task force because I just said to one of the reporters, being a campus president that's highly diverse, it's easy to get comfortable in your diversity and think that there may not be more you need to do. So being here was reminded me, and I was able to go back to my campus 
and talk to them about some of the things that I, I saw here in that, um, you know, have we looked at our training? Have we looked at our policies? Because again, you, you, you know, when you have such diversity, you figure we're good. And so I appreciate uh, having been invited to be here and thank you because I, I learned a lot and I met some folks who, um, you know, I'm you know, looking forward to running to on another occasions, although perhaps not in another series of task force meetings. Um, but again, so thank you and thank you and thank uh, the other members. You're quite welcome, Willie. Thank Next you. Thing. Other comments, Mr. Garrett. I just want to uh, thank uh, you, President Kermit, for uh, being here uh, tonight with us. The, uh, the task force has certainly been hard at work, and so we definitely appreciate your presence. Um, uh, if you, uh, in case you're unfamiliar with me, my name is Gary Daniels. I'm newly elected student body president for Associated Students, and I want to ask you this question on behalf of all no students. No questions, Gary. There's no uh, questions. Just know that. This is just for you to make your comments. There's no questions. Okay, well. It's the ground rules here, all right? Okay then. All right. Well, okay. So, no question mark there. No right. Question. So, so I'm so I'm you can make saying this statements. statement on behalf of all students, and this is a campus climate issue because the way students feel, the way students feel on this campus is the campus climate. So, the student success excellence of technology fee is currently six hundred dollars. It's going up to eight hundred dollars. Um, uh, that currently accounts for nineteen million dollars worth of funding. 40% of that $19 million currently goes to athletics. Um, students would like for you to address them on this issue on at April, uh, two Tuesdays from now, April 29th at 11.45 a.m. We <coughs> students would like for you to address this student success excellence of technology fee and as to why 40% of this uh, $19 million is going to athletics when you have so many failing students in departments and colleges. We want to make that statement, thank you. Thank you, Gary. Anyone else have anything they'd like to say? Delorme. I also want to thank you for this <laughs> opportunity to participate in this activity. This has been very interesting, and I enjoyed working with all these people here. Um, I also want to recommend to you that we work together, community and campus, on trying to build a stronger town-gown relationship. I think the community is very interested in what's happening on campus, um, and I hope that the campus is very interested in this community as well. And I'm, I know that they would like to know a great deal more about the positive things that are happening on campus, about the creativity on this campus, and about the changes that you're contributing to this community. Thank you, Delorme. Rick, calendar. Well, I definitely wanted to thank the judge, but I'll start off by saying thank you for allowing me to be part of the judge's courtroom and allowing me to sit <laughs> to, 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 to be at her table here. But, but I think it's, it, it's, bold, it's a bold leadership move to open up, open dialogue and communication on issues of race, especially when you've had a travesty like something like this has happened on campus. I think the mark of a true leader is one that's willing to open themselves up to criticism as well as open their leadership up to criticism in a way that, has, that you've done here. I think that's a, a very bold move. And I think not only do you have the opportunity to continue to lead by implementing not only the easy recommendations, but the hard ones, all of these recommendations. I know you're going to take them seriously. I know you're going to look at them. I know you're going to take them to heart. But that's what I ask you to do is to show that continued leadership by implementing all of the recommendations. I think by doing that, not only will you gain the trust of the students, not only will you gain the trust of the faculty and the staff, not only will you can, uh, gain the trust of the entire community, but I can tell you, you will have the trust in the, of the NAACP and we will stand by you in making sure that we defend you in doing these things. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Chris. So thank you, President Koyumi, for being here. And I also want to echo everyone else and thank uh, Judge Cordell. I really appreciate your leadership on this matter. And so I want to thank you, President, for uh, actually convening this task force so that we get an opportunity to take uh, some of the, the task on of really looking at our campus climate. I've been a lecturer on this campus for many, many years, and I've served under several presidents, actually. And one of the things that I've noticed in my time here is that, you know, sometimes we have problems of communication on campus. There are problems of communication between faculty, staff, students. And so I think that in this time period, we have a renewed opportunity to 
improve that communication all the way around. And one of the things that I would really like to see also is I just think we need to really humanize our campus in many ways. We have a huge bureaucracy. I think that there are ways in which our bureaucracy can actually become more people friendly. And that's people friendly for faculty, staff, and students. And I, I, I think that uh, in your position of leadership, we do definitely have a renewed opportunity for us to look at those things. Um, and so I very much look forward to seeing the progress that we make as a campus community as a whole in a relatively short period of time. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Anyone else? Marcos. Thank you. Um, I want to say the same thing about the judge. I love you. You've done great. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, thanks for having me on this um, committee. I, I, the circumstances under which we were convened really are sad and disturbing to me on a really personal level. Um, I'm also disheartened that it's taken an incident like this for us to come together as a university and recognize that there's some critical issues that need to be addressed. Our work with students, staff, and faculty have shown us um, for a long period of time that San Jose State has a long way to go in terms of addressing diversity and inclusive excellence. There's a significant part of our community, though, that has been committed to addressing diversity issues in truly substantive ways. So it's my hope that for you as president, um, you're going to dedicate the energy and resources to put SJSU at the forefront of enthusiastically engaging diversity in academia in ways that are linked to meaningfully addressing the needs of our students and communities. And that you recognize that you're accountable to all of us to our students and to their families. Working with thousands of students each year who are the first in their families to go to college and who come from communities that have been disenfranchised from higher education is a challenge. But it's only when we fail to recognize the intellectual strengths and gifts those students and their communities offer us. And I see that every day when I walk into the classroom. So more than our work in engineering or in computer science or in any of the many areas of technology or business that we highlight at San Jose State, the work we do to help diverse students and communities transform our university, and that's our greatest strength. So that should be our primary commitment always for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Marcos. Is there anyone else? Yep. Peter. So I would like to echo what everyone else is saying, and uh, thank you definitely for your time. And I want to thank you also for incorporating student voice um, in times of hard conversation with such a delicate issue, um, opening up a space around the table for students to come and voice what their experience is with this campus and with the climate really is a sign of uh, great progress and strong leadership. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Anyone else? Okay. Anthony. President Cramley. Just want to say, uh, as all of my colleagues have said, it's been a, a pleasure to serve on this task force, and I appreciate all the contributions of the members of the task force. And I want to say to you that uh, it is difficult uh, when you are the leader because you also know you're the lightning rod for so much that happens. And collectively, this group has said, we are trusting you and putting faith in you to be able to restore the reputation of San Jose State University. And so we know you'll do that and look forward to working with you in all the ways we can. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Michael. <coughs> well, I was originally not gonna say anything and I was gonna <laughs> sit still, but I, I can't leave without thanking the judge. I, it's been a real, a real pleasure being here with you. And all of you, all of you, I want to also thank you for uh, allowing me to be on the task force as well. But I also want to give a special thank you to the people who have been coming here night after night after night. And what I, I'd appreciate if you turn around and just, just look at them. Uh, I want to call one person out in particular. Actually, a few people. Uh, Consuela, will you raise your hand, please? Wigsy, Elma. You know, people like that <coughs> have. Uh, encouraged me to continue to stay here and to do what I do. And they've been good role models. And all of you have also taught me and been good role models. I'd like to say a special thank you to Delorme, to Rick, because what it does is it shows me that the community really cares. I appreciate our, our people from Southern California coming down. Uh, the point is, this stuff is real. Uh, diversity is not just a term or a label. It's, it's a reality in which we all exist. So I'm going to encourage you to, to, to do what you can to, to keep <coughs> things flowing toward the future. And I'm going to let it go from here. Thank you, Michael. Chris? I, since we're all thanking everybody, I just want to thank Dorothy Poole, actually. Uh, Dorothy has done a lot of hard work in putting all these things together. Yeah, somehow she's found a way to have a 28, maybe a 30-hour day. I, I need to get her secret on that. So thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> okay, who hasn't spoken yet? All right, Diana. Hi, uh, thank you for being here. Um, my name is Diana. I'm a fifth year nursing student, so I'm graduating next semester. Um, being here, I've 
had a great, thank you. <laughs> I've had a lot of great experiences, a lot of diverse experiences. And you know, I was very shocked, just as everyone, when this came to light. And being on this task force has really brought to light a lot of the administration policies, and I've learned so much. So when I graduate, I want to be able to come back and see all these changes <coughs> being made and to see a difference in this campus and know that I came here and, and I am a proud Spartan in that that there can be change made on this campus. Okay, yeah, and I just wanna stress that, but thank you for doing this and thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Ellen. I also want to thank you for convening all of us. It's great to work with all of you and everyone has put in a lot of time. So we're putting the trust in you and I have every trust that you'll be able to um, carry forward the recommendations. I also like to take this opportunity, since it was mentioned earlier, the VP of Student Affairs search is coming up. I like to <coughs> recommend that you, the Student Affairs, since I'm the only representative besides Tony there from Student Affairs, that folks from Student Affairs be part of that search as well as students. Gabriella, thank you, Ellen. Okay, good evening. Use thank the, use the mic. Put it right here. Thank you, Judge Cordell, for your uh, leadership in the task force and President Koyomi for the opportunity to form the task force, uh, unfortunately under you know, devastating circumstances. Uh, however, I would like to emphasize the importance of the impl implementation of these recommendations by addressing the wide variety of issues the San Jose State community faces, prompt responses, uh, and available resources would make San Jose State a community in which all faculty, administrators, and staff, and students would feel safe and respected. In closing, the process of prioritizing and implementing these recommendations, as Judge Cordell uh, mentioned previously, should be as transparent as the work this task force has done within these past few weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriella. Is there anyone else? Uh, Coach just Wright. Want, just wanted to say thank you, Judge and President. Thank you for um, putting this committee together. This is a great beginning, too. I think that's, that can be something that we can carry on and keep going from here and learn from this and, and, and hopefully never be in this position again. I, I, I think it's really important that we have to make sure that it just doesn't stop here, not with the recommendations, <coughs> it just consistently always talked about and, and stay in the forefront. Thank you, Coach. Maria? I'd also like to thank uh, Judge Cordell and thank you, President, uh, for being here. Um, but also if the young man, the student who is at the center of the incident is watching, if his parents are watching. Um, I just want to publicly state that um, I think we all greatly lament what happened to you and that we're here so that um, it never happens to anyone again. So I just want to make sure that you know that um, all of the time that we've spent here, all of the individuals who have come here every time, um, truly are sorry for what happened to you. Thank you, Maria. Is there anyone else? Okay, Gabriel. All right, so hello, um, and I wanna really thank uh, Judge Cordell and the president for coming today. Um, well, my name is Gabriel, and I'm the director of intercultural affairs for Associated Students, and I just wanna say that as a student, I have had such an amazing experience so far um, I've been able to travel to many places. I've been able to um, be involved in different community service opportunities. I've been able to do many multiple things, serve on many multiple committees and commissions and task forces. Um, and hopefully that we could all synchronize all of our knowledge that we have on this campus in order to improve it and really make it like a good, the best university that it could be because this is a wonderful institution and hopefully everybody could see that even though things have happened that can make it seem that it's not that. Um, we need to strive forward in order to make it a really good place for students to enjoy and faculty to enjoy and everybody to enjoy. So I hope that you really take these recommendations to heart and the, that you be the champion for diversity on this campus. Thank you, Gabriel. Okay. Is there anyone else? All right, so I have the final say. Uh, so first, I thank my fellow task force members. You are lovely, you are smart, and you care. And that combination has made for a wonderful set of meetings uh, to come out with these recommendations. So I thank you for putting up with me. Uh, we were determined to get this done in a certain period of time, and we did it. 
so to President Kiyomi, I have the following to say to you. A crisis is a terrible thing to waste. Now is the time to use this ugly incident of racial bullying to bring positive and long-lasting change to San Jose State University. Let this crisis be the impetus for institutional change that will live on long past your tenure as president. Our recommendations to you are thoughtful and they are challenging. There are some on this task force who have expressed skepticism that there will be any meaningful implementation. I am not one of them. I believe that this administration under your leadership will go forward to make these recommendations a reality. Why do I say this? Yesterday, I spoke with Carl Douglas, the attorney who represents the victim of the bullying and the parents. I telephoned Mr. Douglas to find out how the family felt about our recommendations. Had we left anything out? Had we covered everything? <coughs> Mr. Douglas asked me to convey to my fellow task force members and to you that the family and he were, and I use his words, enthusiastically supportive of all of the recommendations. And he told me that they applauded the transparency of this process. The victim, his parents, and the world have been watching us, and now they will be watching you. I am confident that you and your administration will do the right thing now that our work is done. A crisis is a terrible thing to waste. My fellow task force members and I ask you not to waste this one. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Cordell, uh, task force uh, members. Thank you very much for those uh, heartfelt and passionate comments that all of you had. When we uh, appointed the task force on uh, racial discrimination, I made, it, you know, I made two items very clear, how we can have an independent and also very transparent task force. And the next thing was how we can really have a chair that will be strong, independent, and focused and also how we can have members from, that will represent very diverse point of, points of view from all different uh, groups of the university and our community as a whole. Also to inform the work that you were doing for the task force, that's why uh, we had an independent uh, investigator who completed the work and, uh, and as soon as that work was completed, the report was made public uh, immediately available to anyone who would like to look at it. And basically uh, that report was made public in, in uh, early February, and that was the time that the work of uh, your task force primarily began. Tonight, we, after uh, all of the uh, many nights that as a, uh, collectively as a group, some of you traveling from far and some from near got together and worked so hard for uh, in making these uh, recommendations. Uh, first, I wanna, you know, uh, the words sometimes cannot express my deep gratitude to each and every one of you, but I have to limit it to the word thank you because I do not know how else to say it. First, I wanna thank uh, Judge Cordell for uh, your leadership, for uh, being a strong and focused leader, for trying to make sure that the work moves forward and trying to make sure that the input of each and every person of the committee was uh, in task force was taken very seriously and also that uh, uh, anybody from the audience, they had time to share their opinion and uh, make comments. Uh, the very honest and, uh, and critical input that all of you have provided really deserves a tremendous level of consideration and uh, it would really help us uh, move forward. I think when we look at the level of transparency, you've met way, uh, uh, really established a very high bar on transparency. Each and every one of your meetings were open. Uh, all of the meetings were uh, video streamed and all of the meetings were, uh, were archived 
all of the notes that you had was available for anybody and they are available on the, on the, on the website. I think it's really when uh, the comments and the recommendations that all of you have put together it really reflects the wide uh, uh, range and the diverse experience in each and every one of you. Uh, and, uh, the, and, uh, and I think that's why it, re uh, it requires a lot, of, uh, a lot of thought that needs to be put on these areas. The recommendations that you have, as the, uh, the, uh, Judge Cordell mentioned, they will not be easy fixes. Uh, it requires a lot of uh, careful consideration, and I can promise you that I'm going to make sure that these items get very uh, timely consideration. And I want to make sure that you develop a, a very thoughtful and sustainable plan so we can have the impact that each and every one of you uh, accept and expect from this uh, group. Also, I would like to, th uh, uh, as we start the work now, we will make sure that our, uh, the campus community is informed on the, on the progress that we have. And also, again, at the end, I would like to thank each and every one of you again. As I said earlier, the word thank you sometimes does not express the deep uh, sense of gratitude that I have to each and every one of you for spending the time, for the energy, the effort that every one of you have done. Again, thanks a lot, and thank you very much. I think this, the work that you have done is really is going to be tremendously helpful for the future of the university, and I have, and I'm fully committed in taking these recommendations uh, forward and uh, work on each and every one of them. Thank you. Thank you. And this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>